All right. Um, <clears throat> so given uh, this table of values, what we need to do is we need to figure out what is going to be our linear function. So there's a couple things we need to remember about a, a function, right? A function has an input value, which is x. And then we're going to have an output value. So this f of x, the f represents the name of the function, and x represents the value of the function at x. So what we did was I say, well, what about when my input is negative 1? My output on my function was a negative 7. When I plug in a 0, I now get a 0 as my output. So I need to think of, so what am I doing to my function to get these values? So the first thing I always like to look into is looking at adding and subtracting, okay? And let's say we have, so we have f of x equals x. And the easiest thing to look at is, here's my output, right? Here's the input. So if I was going to say, like, let's say I plugged in 1. Well, if I had this, then for, I'm sorry. If I plugged in, like, 1 as my input, okay? So that's my output value, but here is the value of the input. And now I probably got you really confused, right? This is really what we call just, like, the function. But it's also called, like, the input part of the function. But if I plug in 1, which is my input, I'm going to get out 1 for this function. But if I said, like, let's say f of x equals x plus 2, and then I plug in a 1, I would get 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3. Okay? So that's how you could get something different. If I had plugged in a 1, then I'd get out a 3. So what we want to do is we, I always like to look at what am I adding and subtracting first. So I look at this, to go from negative 7 to, to negative 1 to negative 7, I would have to subtract 8. And then what I want to see, is this true for the rest of them? Well, 0 minus 8 does not give me 0, and 1 minus 8 does not give me 7. So therefore, subtracting or adding is not going to work. So the next thing I want to look at is what about multiplication? If I multiply a number, let's say, for instance, let's say I, my new function was 2x. Well, then 2 times 1 would still actually give me 2 in this example. But if I did f times 3, then I'd have 2 times 3, which would leave me 6. So I need to say, well, how could I, can I multiply numbers to my x to get my f of x value of um, negative 7? Or to get my f of x value? So if I plug in a negative 1, what do I have to do to get a negative 7? We already ruled out you can't add and subtract. So what about multiplying? What do I have to multiply by negative 1 to give me negative 7? You can say, well, you can multiply by 7, right? So we can say f of x is equal to 7 times x. Or sorry, 7x. So, geez. so we know that works for the first equation. Does that work for the next one? If I plug in a 0, f of 0 equals 7 times 0. Do I get... 0 again. Well, 7 times 0 is obviously 0. What about f of 1? f of 1 equals 7 times 1, which equals 7, which again is my output. And if I try f of 2, I get 7 times 2. Well, 7 times 2 is 14, which again is my output. So the first thing we're doing one of these, so therefore my linear function, actually, I should say, is going to be f of x equals 7 times x, okay? Because what I'm doing is, to get all my input, I'm multiplying by 7 to get my output f of x, to get my output values, all right? Um, so the main important thing to always look at, to look for the relationships of first adding and subtracting. If adding and subtracting doesn't work, then look to the relationship of uh, multiplying or dividing. And if that doesn't work, then there's another one you guys, I'll show you a little bit later of how you can combine the two of them to find your linear function.